I think one of the challenges to resurrecting a game like Medieval, uh, you, you, you go back to the original game like we did at the beginning of this, you go back to it and you look at it. You don't want to deliver like, the per like an exact replica of that original game. Right. You want to deliver the game that people remember playing. And so what we want to do is like, instead of going back and recreating that perfectly, we want to recreate what you remember about that game and right. what you took away from that game. Well, there's also the, uh, I mean, we, we have uh, access to the original source code, right? So, and we can see in there that they had intents uh, to, to take the game even further, or they're, uh, like there's boss battles in there that have states uh, that we, just not in the final game that they were working on and then were commented out. So we can see what their artistic design was or what they were trying to go after. And one of the most important aspects of doing that is really walking in the shoes of the original creators. Yeah. So that's why it's almost like a, an archaeological project where you're, you're, you're kind of digging up all this material, yeah. you're talking to the original team, you're trying to find out exactly what they were thinking, what they were feeling at the time, and you use that as a way to springboard into the new direction you want to take the game and, and the presentation and, and the feel and the mechanics. Yeah, enemies in particular were uh, a huge challenge. Um, there are, you know, 56 different enemy types, um, which, you know, by today's standards, you go even, even you know, large AAA games don't have that, that variety of characters. The one thing that stands out to me about Medieval that I still remember today was when I first got to the time device level, mm -hmm. which is this crazy level that has brains, trains, and clockwork parts, and it was just this bizarre, change of pace in the game that just felt like it belonged as much as it didn't. And I really enjoyed that part of the game. And, and I, I, in fact, like that level kind of opened my eyes up to, uh, to that kind of design where you can just throw that weird left hook that nobody's expecting and take people on this like totally different path in a game. And that, that one was hands down my favorite part of the game. The Hall of Heroes is probably my favorite place in the game uh, because it, it's, it's uh, something that alludes to a larger world that Dan lives in. And, and that world is everywhere. Uh, you know, it, you, you can feel it everywhere. It's the way the characters are written, uh, the, the personalities involved. And there's just a, a ton of charm there that makes you want to spend time in that world. And I think, ultimately, I think that's one of the reasons why it has endured for 20 years. Uh, you know, why, why people today are just such huge fans of it. Um, is because those characters they created. Um, Dan is an amazing character, and you know all of this this cast of characters of all these heroes that come from different lands, and uh, they all have something to say about Dan and his position in the world. Um, I, I think really that that to me is really you know having the ability to go in and interpret that and sort of uh, build out this world and artistically was was really probably been the most fun part of this entire thing. <laughs> Thank you.